Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, I'd love to say this is a parody, but unfortunately, this isn't. This is, uh, yes, the haunted wardrobe. The ghost of Christmas past. I think, quite possibly, he was Queen Victoria's last serious love interest. Yes, the mewling pencil himself, Jacob Rees-Mogg. Um, one of the things you can always tell with Jacob, he knows full well, he can peddle any lie because he talks with a posh accent, you know. I can just peddle any lie. So, and I get away with it because we're a nation of cap doffers and forelock tuggers. And soon they hear a plummy accent, they go all gooey at the knees, listen to every syllable I say, and then go absolutely frothing at the mouth when I speak a little Latin. And this is his fantastic defence of uh, defending our Crime Minister, Bodger Johnson. This is getting quite difficult for the Prime Minister, isn't it? No, it isn't. So, no, 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 it isn't. But it's pretty clear that he set the rules and then broke the rules. Yeah, I think that's pretty conclusive. I think that's true. No, I think you misunderstand what's happened. Um, in, in other words, Pleb, know your place. Do not question your betters. I went to Eton, you know, and so did your Prime Minister. The Prime Minister thought that what he was doing was within the rules, and the police... Well, if he thought what he was doing was in the rules, then that makes him incompetent, and that basically proves he shouldn't be anywhere near politics, anywhere near 10 Downer Street, or anywhere near the front or back benches. Pretty much like yourself, Jacob Rees-Mogg. ...thought otherwise, and this is just like the DRS system in cricket. That sometimes the batsman in good faith thinks he's not out LBW, sometimes the umpire thinks he's not out in good faith, but it goes to the third umpire who says he was out, and then the batsman accepts the decision. It's exactly what's happened to the Prime Minister. It's, it's, it's yes, how he's using cricket, cricketing analogies. DRS is where, say, a batsman, if you don't know about cricket, is caught LBW when the bowler bowls the ball and it hits him on the pads and and is slap banging in 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 between in the between the wickets and uh, the um the bowler shouts how's that the and the umpire gives him out and if if the if the then the batsman will walk up to his other batsman do you think that looked out and then, uh, no it looked pretty plum actually mate. Uh, well, I'm going to refer it, just in the faint hope that um, he maybe maybe delivered an old ball, or even though my bat was t 10 yards away from the ball, I might have just nicked it, and then goes through all the, all the rigmarole of looking at the graphics and all the, the which trajectory the ball goes into, and it wraps him on the wickets, he's on, on the pads, he's not touched the ball. And he's out LBW. Now what? Now what? Our J Dog is saying now is that what happened was was like W G Grace. Now W G Grace was a was a one of those English exceptionalist batsmen with a big beard down to his ankles. Walked up. Apparently, in one one uh, episode, a bowler ran up, bowled him, clean bowled him, bails on the floor. And uh, everybody's, oh, that? And all that. He picked up the bales, put them back on the stumps, and he went, it's, bang, it's trifling windy out here today. And anyway, you fail to realise, Bowler, they've not come to see you, Bo. They've come to see me, but... And that's... And that's it. Talks with a plummy accent and all his mouth frothers, his uh, nodding dog supporters will believe everything he says. But anyway, not undeterred, the reporter comes out with a belter. What you would expect, I must have. And if it's all.
Yes, and now I, now, I, now I must dash because now I know you're going to start uh, asking uncomfortable questions. And if it's all fine, that must mean there's no problem for the Privilege Committee to look at this. The Privileges Committee um, is a distinguished body of the House of Commons, but is chaired by... Yeah. Now, this, wait, this shows you how, how childish this man is. A uh, Labour Party politician. I'd bear that in mind. Yes, it's talking about Chris Bryant. And what did Chris Bryant do, apparently, from what I've heard? Oh, he's, uh, he's relinquished it. So there's so the, so the car go down the avenue straight away, straight to the desk. Uh, well, yeah, to cut out any problems, I'm going to relinquish it for this one. So can't argue on that front. But it shows you what a childish, pathetic, petulant little eaten turd this man is. So all he had left. He said, well, it's been led by a Labour politician, so I think you should bear that in mind. What's what's that got to do with it? It's a cross party committee and all that sort of stuff. The man is just a pathetic, mealy mouthed little bodger sycophant because he knows full well once the bodge is gone, he's out the door, gone. Nobody in their right mind would have this clown in their government. And that's all it is with this. Our Jacob Reese Mogg. A pathetic, petulant man baby. Right, I shall leave the video here until the next time. I shall bid you farewell and take care.